Please get ready for a dictation of exercise number 9 and 10 from the progressive magazine of January 2022. 5 seconds. Start. Economic and cultural issues were referred to separate committees and their reports were finally adopted by the committee of the whole conference this committee also dealt with the remainder of the agenda including the main political issues the house will be familiar from the final communique of the conference which has been laid on the table of the house with the proceedings of these committees and the recommendations made it is however relevant to draw attention to their main characteristics these recommendations wisely avoided any provision for setting up additional machinery of international cooperation but on the other hand sought to rely on existing international machinery in part and for the rest on such decisions as individual governments may by contact and negotiation find it possible to make i respectfully submit to the house that in dealings between sovereign governments this is a wise and practical step to adopt it is important further to note that all delegations without exception realized the importance of both economic and cultural relations the decisions represent a break away from the generally accepted belief and practice that asia in matters of technical aid financial or cultural cooperation and exchange of experience must rely exclusively on the non asian world detailed recommendations apart the reports of these committees which became the decision of the conference proclaim the reaching out of asian countries to one another and their determination to profit by one another's experience on the basis of mutual cooperation in the economic field the subjects dealt with include technical assistance early establishment of a special united nations fund for economic development appointment of liaison officers by participating countries stabilization of commodity trade and prices through bilateral and multilateral arrangements increased processing of raw materials study of shipping and transport problems establishment of national and regional banks and insurance companies development of atomic energy for peaceful purposes and exchange of information and ideas on matters of mutual interest in the cultural field the conference similarly dealt with a wide range of subjects recognizing that the most powerful means of promoting understanding among nations is the development of cultural cooperation the links that bound the asian and african countries together in earlier ages had been surrendered their more recent history of foreign conquest and annexation the new asia would seek to revive the old ties and build newer 
and better forms of relationship with other countries. As a practical step, the conference decided that the endeavors of the respective countries in the field of cultural cooperation should be directed towards better knowledge of each other's country, mutual cultural exchanges and the exchange of information and that the best results would be achieved by pursuing bilateral arrangements, each country taking action on its own in the best ways open to it. The work of the committee of the whole conference was devoted to problems mainly grouped under the headings of human rights and self-determination, problems of dependent peoples and the promotion of world peace and cooperation. Under each head were grouped a large number of specific problems. In the consideration of human rights and self-determination, specific problems such as racial discrimination and segregation were considered. Special consideration was given to the Union of South Africa and the position of people of Indian and Pakistani origin in that country as well as to the problem of Palestine in its relation to world peace, human rights and the plight of the refugees. The problem of dependent peoples or colonialism, colonialism was a subject which at once created both pronounced agreement and disagreement. In the condemnation of colonialism in its well understood sense, namely the rule of one people by another with its attendant evils, the conference was at one. It affirmed its support of those still struggling to attain their independence and called upon the powers concerned to grant them independence. Special attention was paid to the problem of Morocco, Tunisia and Algeria as well as to West Iran, Aden, which is a British protectorate and is in a different category also came in for consideration. There was, however, another and different view in the conference which sought to bring under colonialism and to include in these above affirmation the alleged conditions in some countries which are sovereign nations. Some of these are members of the United Nations and all of them are independent in terms of international law and practice. They have diplomatic relations with ourselves and other, and other countries of the world, including the big powers. It appeared to us that irrespective of whatever views may be held in regard to the conditions prevailing in these countries or of relationships that may exist between the Soviet Union and them, they could in no way be called colonies, nor could their alleged problems come under the classification of colonialism. To so include them in any general statement on behalf of the conference could be accomplished only by acceptance 
by a great number of the participants of the conference, including ourselves, of political views and attitudes which are not theirs at all. Stop.